Hello and welcome to the I Create Daily Podcast. I'm Leora Alderson. And I'm Devani Alderson. We are the mother-daughter co-founders of the I Create Daily brand. We are passionate about encouraging positivity, creativity, and productivity while bringing you information and resources that support your creative aspirations. I Create Daily is for creators in every genre of creating, from musicians to writers, crafters to inventors, bloggers to entrepreneurs. So if you're into creating anything, this podcast has something for you. So tell us, what would support you most in your journey? You can reach us at creator at iCreateDaily.com. Thank Thank you you for for joining joining us us on on this journey. journey. Hello and welcome to another episode on the I Create Daily podcast, a movement for creators serious about their work. I am Devani. And I'm Leora. And today we're doing a coffee break and our coffee break are where we discuss ideas, people, and things that are of interest or top of mind that we think will interest you and help you on your journey of creativity. That sounded really choppy, but Man, you're fine. Today's topic is the importance of reviews, and we've been wanting to do this coffee break for a little while now because reviews online, at, well, first of all, let's back up. We know one of the best market, marketing strategies in the history of marketing is word of mouth and just telling friends and family and everybody that you come in contact with the things that you like or don't like and we trust that a lot as humans we are social creatures and we all trust when somebody we trust gives us a recommendation and so that also translates to the online world when products or art or books or whatever you're looking to purchase has reviews behind it whether you're on the buying side or the creator side those reviews really help us so in this coffee break we're going to dive into that topic yeah, definitely. Um, nope, that was a good intro. And up oh, here we are again. There's a hummingbird fluttering over there. We're also going to talk about hummingbirds. Yeah, sorry. Here we are out, <laughs> out in nature. If you're not seeing it on video, we are outside on our deck in North Carolina in the summertime, uh, July, as of the time of 2019, the time that this is being recorded. And it's so delightful with hummingbirds and birds and butterflies flying around. But anyway, on to the topic of reviews. So one of the greatest struggles that um, authors, especially as yet unknown authors have, uh, as well as artists and product creators uh, of getting, uh, growing your brand is by not getting enough reviews. And we have that struggle as well. Uh, We are, Devani and I are both creators and uh, content creators, writers, uh, product creators, uh, we, we are not marketers, uh, even though Devani does social media marketing for her clients. Social media is a different kind of social media presence and brand building is more where we're strong as well, as opposed to sales and marketing. Social media is more conversation hosting as yeah. opposed to really hardcore selling. I mean, some of it can be, but a lot of what I do is more on the conversation side. Right, because we are personable, we like people, we like to interact with people, and like many creators, uh, we're also not at all into the hard selling kind of, um, even the funnel kind of system that is the old school of marketing that's still very, very effective, uh, and those who, who are the most financially successful are those who employ that method, even though so many of us these days uh, shy away from the, the webinars and the things where we're we feel like we're being sold and no one likes that. And yet it still happens. It's sort of like this. It's sort of like the news and how people complain about how negative the news is and all the bad stuff out there and the yeah. negativism, and the diverse device. What is it? Divisiveness. divisiveness. Yeah. Uh, out there and people complain about it. And yet if they continue to tune into it, then it continues to be perpetuated um, because you know negative new cells. We are wired as humans to tune into what's that? You know, it's like that in our ancestral DNA, survival depended on us tuning into the bad news, and now survival depends on us turning it off. That's <laughs> Ironically, fan- yeah, that's fantastic. <laughs> that is so true. It is so true. If it is that you know we really because there's. Uh, A uh, visionary documentarian um, years ago, his name is Bill Mosher. I mean, actually, I shouldn't say years ago. I knew of him and was acquainted with him years ago. He's still doing his producing of films and that sort of thing. Bill Mosher said um, that we become the stories we tell. Mm. 
And as a civilized, and also Jason Silva talks about that. It's like we become um, the reality that we create. We create a reality and then that reflects back to us and we become that which we created and it becomes us and in a way we kind of perpetuate that and you're likely listening to this coffee break after we published our uh interview with sandra biskind who talked about this exact thing as well of yes like just creating your reality in a conscious way you create your thoughts um and then your thoughts create you that was i think one of the quotes that she yeah. said um and so this the concept again is like it well, here's another example, another way of looking at the same thing. People are far more likely to shout out a negative experience with a brand and, you know, cuss it up and down. I'm never going to, um, you know, buy from them again, etc. Even if they've had positive experiences before. In the past with the same company. Um, because, you know, we just, I, for whatever reason, it's the same kind of thing. And so what we're really all about, a, a lot of what we're about at I Create Daily, um, as well as a family, as well as individuals, is basically putting thinking, thinking into positivity, uh, changing our mindset, um, the reframing negativity into positivity because we become, again, back to the thing, we become the stories we tell, we become the thoughts we have. And so if it is we want to improve our life, um, then we have to start there. At the, again, the Sandra Biskind uh, interview talks a lot about the unconscious programming. And so we, it's sort of like our animal nature is to tune into what's that, what's wrong. Uh, we see it in our dogs. As soon as they hear a sound outside, they go running out barking, even though they have no clue what it is that they're running out barking to. That is the animal mind. That is the animal mentality. And so we, you know, as as evolving humans, the more conscious we become, the more we can direct our attention and focus and not latch onto the clickbait things that are happening in the media, uh, in politics, on websites, you know, that, that, that have all those glaring things that make you want to click to find the answer to what this movie star looks like now. You won't believe what she looks like now, um, this child star, whatever it is. That taps into, like, the negative side of us. And so what it is that people are less likely to do, even though many people shout out good things, we need more of that, um, and we need more. Of, and this is like the hard part is for creators to ask for that. Mm -hmm. Now, what we're talking about are like if you're an author, reviews on Amazon, um, reviews on other book sites. If you're selling at Barnes and Noble, reviews on Barnes and Noble, reviews on the person's uh, Facebook page, uh, on their social media, shouting them out, and then even. If you have any reviews that people have sent via email, asking if you can use that on your website, because yeah. people might be more likely to email you something like, hey, I read your book and it was fantastic, blah, 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 blah. And then you could just, it's not too hard to reply back and say, hey, thank you so much for taking the time to share your thoughts. Can I please use an excerpt of this or a snippet of this and put it on my website? Uh, that's a perfectly fine ask. Most people yeah. are more than happy to have you, uh, it also means they don't have to rewrite what they said. And we, and so here's what, often what happens is people who um, know artists, uh, creators, whatever, um, are so glad to compliment and make comments on the products that they post or the books that they post or the art that they post. You know, congratulations, that's fantastic, that's beautiful, wow, that's a fantastic book cover, what have you. And they're posting it either in email, like you said, or Facebook messaging, text messaging. Or Instagram um, so comments. Exactly. But so seldom do, do we actually take the time to publish on Amazon, for instance, where it is it matters for that author. So it's sort of like, and, and we've totally been guilty of this. So this is not, this is like we all do this. In fact, until we started selling things on Amazon, we didn't even, we had never left a review even though we like to shout out positivity in products and companies that we enjoy, we had never actually gone to Amazon to leave a review there. And it never crossed publicly. our minds. Never even crossed our minds. In fact, I wasn't even shopping based on reviews. Many people do. Um, but I wasn't at that time even paying attention to the people's reviews in order to make a product decision. I would just make a decision based on the product or based on what I was looking for and go for that. Um, now I tend to pay attention to the notice. Coleman does that. And so I pay attention. And dad and Nicolai are the ones who, uh, my brother and, and dad, they're the ones who scan through the reviews and they're very diligent about it and remind yeah. us to do it as well. Like, yeah. are the reviews on that good though? Yeah. And so we do now because yeah. we also 
create product reviews for people through our gardening site, gardensall.com. We have product reviews there. We even have articles on I Create Daily. That's that right. Are on products reviews and, on product and exactly, stuff. Yeah. Exactly. Um, so we do now and that we're aware of it and yet not enough. I, we should still do it more. Um, and it's like, I don't, and it's sort of like taking the time to do that, but especially for people that you know and brands that you know and follow and products that you like, mm. books that you like, um, while the authors so appreciate you taking the time to post on their Facebook page or on their Instagram, what will serve them far, far more and support their creative endeavors, support more artists and their artistry in the world is to leave that review on places on their e-commerce platforms, Amazon, Shopify, Noble, wherever their shopping Etsy, cart is. Yeah, Etsy, Etsy stores. Etsy is a big uh, creative platform that is also has the review element. So so anybody, bubble, any yeah. of those, any of the artist site, any site where you have bought something, for instance, even if you don't know that artist, if you have bought something, uh, and it could be you know a handmade item, it could be a painting, it could be I don't know even like a bed covers that you you love uh, to go and take the moment to take literally the five minutes three minutes to post a review will help other people make the purchasing decision as well as support that maker and that creator um, and being honest too because it doesn't mean that every time you leave a review it's always going to be a five star this is amazing this is fantastic uh, that can sometimes seem fake if it's like too much of like oh this is totally amazing it's just about leaving your honest opinion so that other people can also make a buying decision and because part of the part of the business of uh, being an artist and creator is getting your work in front of people and a lot of the internet algorithms as they're currently set up whether it's Amazon or Etsy or any of the platforms we've talked about or haven't talked about, a lot of those systems, the content gets put in front of people based on the reviews that are gotten. So if somebody's painting or uh, somebody's pillowcase that has a specific painting on it and they're selling it on Etsy and it's a handmade custom pillows or living room wear, whatever it is, uh, the more reviews on that product, the more it gets elevated in the Etsy platform under home design or whatever. So that's just part of the social algorithm of these platforms right. is how much people are talking the product up. And many people don't necessarily, most purchasers don't think about that at all. And so as a business owner, part of our job is to sort of create a more educated clientele or customer. And part of that is asking, hey, um, I love creating this stuff for you guys. And if you've ever made a purchase, would you mind writing a few, writing some of your thoughts in a review and then link it to whatever platform that you need that review on? Yeah. So whenever somebody sends us notes and we say whether from whatever, whichever one of our brands, we actually share it, you know, we'll shout out and read it to everyone in, in, in family, whoever's around. It's great morale uh, boost. <laughs> yeah, we'll, we'll share that. But what will actually serve far more is to for you to share it with the world by virtue of putting your reviews out there. I'm sure it's the same for your, other people that you follow or whose work you, you appreciate. And so if you are the creator, like you were saying, if you're the business owner and creator, then you definitely need that. Let's say, and as you were talking, I realized it, here's another example um, on websites. So, and we'll get into more of this perhaps in a different session, um, but your website and your ability to be found, um, to have people find your, have traffic actually being funneled to your website mm -hmm. from Google is dependent in large part to people sharing your site with others. Yeah. Um, so the more that your site is linked in other, from other websites, sharing about yours, then the more traffic Google will send your way. So the social proof concept is huge mm -hmm. in every area of, of endeavor, endeavor that, re, that involves any kind of a sale or a purchase and this is or, more, or a visit, like traffic generating an audience, growing an audience. And that's more of the type of marketing that we focus on the most is really the, um, the social proof, the social, the, the tribe, the community building. Yeah. We like using the word community as opposed to audience. It sounds a little... Um, more personal. It sounds more personal and more like we're people. We're a community of people. You're not just like a listening number or a download number um, or a purchase number. That's, that's not how we view it. But a lot of our marketing is around the um, 
working the algorithms of the internet to boost our content so that the people who are interested in are searching for what we have to offer can find it. And so part of that is, of course, asking for reviews. And that's how we recommend other creators uh, spend some time in their business. Like you could carve out time during the week. Like you, we carve out time for everything that we need to do for creative businesses. So one of those things is then being diligent about following up with people who've left comments, even if it's on social media, you can say, Hey, thanks so much. Like if you're going through your Instagram comments, Hey, thanks. If you, if somebody's bought something, if you know that one of your followers has purchased stuff and they're leaving nice comments, if you could just message them or comment saying, Hey, would you mind pasting this comment into Amazon or whatever platform? Yeah. So one of the things that we're doing, for instance, is we're starting a, for ourselves, a thankful Thursday kind of concept where um, on those days we're going to make a point because there are podcasts that we listen to now that I know I haven't gone and left a review on. Um, so shame on me. And so <laughs> yeah. now it's like, you know, I'm going to make sure that I follow my values. And that is, mm -hmm. I love and admire these people. I send them thank you notes. Or I send emails to people, but that is not going to help them nearly as much as posting, you know, that review on iTunes, on Amazon, on uh, whatever platform, Etsy, what you, like you said, that they're on. Um, so yeah, and, and so we encourage you to do the same. It's sort of like the sharing economy. Yeah. Um, and to just, instead of spending that time, any time, if you do, um, going to that, following that link or tuning into that negative argument or s getting caught up in sort of the fear and, and uh, div divisiveness and negativism that is so prevalent out there, turn that around and turn it into something, turn it into a gratitude moment. Mm -hmm. And that will, it will be amazing the difference it'll make for you as well as for those people who you're sharing, um, whom you're shouting out. And basically. the cool thing too, is when you leave a review, they'll still see it. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, you know, a lot they'll of, still see that. You know, yeah, it's see the, the same as it's the same as leaving an email. They'll still see that. And you know, the, obviously we always recommend when somebody leaves a review, go reply to it. Right. It's amazing how, so there's people who don't know that they need to ask their customer to leave a review, but then there's people who they do do the work of asking the customer to leave reviews. But then we see brands all the time that don't follow up by thanking them. Because on Amazon and most platforms, you can reply to somebody who's left a review. There's very few platforms I know of that you can't reply yeah. to somebody leaving a review. I don't think that's a thing. The even. tricky thing on Amazon, um, at least um, unless it's changed, in my experience, is that you don't get notified. You get notified if they leave a review for your you as a company, mm -hmm. uh, your company, but you, which that's not where the stars show up on the product description. Yeah. You do not get notified if they leave a review on the front side on your product description. Um, so you have to scan that daily. So some people, some brands might miss that, especially if they have, yeah, you know, a lot. Yeah, yeah. Yeah. But for the most part, um, so, but for the most part, we're talking about creators. So yeah. if you're going to go through the trouble of also asking for the reviews, definitely go back and check and see if people have left it. And that reminds me. Um, so, a couple years ago, a year or so, or so ago, um, Amazon went through a massive cleanup campaign. Um, so what was happening um, on Amazon is that many of the early brands into Amazon and, and then the subsequent ones that came on the several tiers and layers of influx to selling on Amazon, um, there was this thing going on of basically buying reviews. Um, there were actually services where you could pay for people to um, get you re reviews mm -hmm. um, and uh, you could pay an Upwork person or an outsourcer um, and to go in and create like 50 reviews for you. And a lot of times they were foreign. You could tell by the, the language that it was not English as a first language reviewers, uh, which means very likely that it was an outsourcer um, gotten very inexpensively and uh and so basically it was one of the reasons I never paid attention to reviews previously is because you could never really tell if it was real or even paid. It was real. But since then, and since reading a bunch, you can kind of get an idea of whether they're real or fake, you know, just by like the, the fake ones or the ones that are like canned where somebody is asked is doing a favor for someone or they've been hired to create reviews or they've been given a free product in exchange for doing a, a nice review generally those are more extensive, more, um, uh, what's the term? Detailed, in depth. De detailed, but also like glowing and, 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 um, like over the top kind of 
Like, Almost sounds like a sales pitch of the product. Yeah, exactly. Yeah, exactly. Yeah. So we, as opposed to, you know, like, I just like, found magic book, I really got into the plot, whatever, but just like a one or two line kind of thing. So yeah. it doesn't have to be an extensive review. In fact, often it sounds more authentic when it isn't. So it doesn't have to take literally more than three minutes of your time. Literally, it could just be, wow, I really enjoyed that podcast. Yeah. So, so, but back to if you're a consumer and you're seeing a lot of reviews and just go through and what we do is look at the one, one and two star mm -hmm. and read them. And the, and I also sort it by most recent reviews um, because like some product companies may have started out badly out of the gate with some really negative reviews. They may have um, created a re revised rendition of their product and improved it, um, in which case the new reviews might reflect that, that it's positive. So definitely look at by most recent as well as by one and two stars and that sort of thing in order to get a sense of if it's if it's leg legitimate, a legitimate review. That is, and, and also if it's current, if you're a buyer. Uh, and if you're a creator, if you're an author, then you need to definitely do uh, like ask your friends and family and your followers um, to if they could leave a review. And that gets back to audience building, mm -hmm. community building, um, which is really hard. Yes, it's hard for fiction writers to build a community around a fiction book. There's no question that that's the hardest uh, perhaps of them all. Um, because if you are a, a writer, for instance, of self-development, then it's pretty easy to create self-development content that other people can follow, other people can like. Uh, it's easy to write articles. It's easy to write Facebook posts. It's easy to create memes. But if you're a fiction author, then you're having to have all most of your content relative to your characters. Not exactly. I mean, you can certainly shout out other other authors in a similar genre and we totally recommend that if you're a fiction writer that you post regularly at least once a day on your social media and that you rotate through a series of things things like asking questions about what would this character do if um, creating quotes creating memes or just comments about quotes from your characters shouting out other authors and what you like about their work excerpts from your books because if you do shout out yes and if you do shout out other authors then they're also more likely to shout out you as well so there's just some and, things um, and we'll link it but um, you your writing and book as a business yes you're the craft of the writer but you are also that is your job you know if you're making it a career um even if it starts out as a side hobby or a side gig it is something that will earn you money which means it's going to be your business and so you have to treat it as such the, the creative work there's the craft side of it but it's not immune to needing to do the business of that and that is the selling the marketing the asking for the reviews the building the community and there's no industry that escapes that if you're going to make it your your business and as you were talking earlier today Devani, the subject came up again about uh creators that don't yet have their own website and how it is that they yeah. might still get their business out there and you were saying oh yeah i was just saying that if you if you are not sure yet that you want your craft to be a viable business if you don't think that you're just on the fence. You're not sure. You don't want to invest in a website yet or a blog because you're just, you're not sure about what you want to do, but you want to try. I would highly recommend, and if you're a writer or enjoy writing, I'd highly recommend going onto medium.com and starting a daily publishing habit, or it doesn't have to be daily. It could be weekly. The more, the better though. And just get into this ritual of showing up to a platform to write and publish your work. Or it could be a vlog, it could be a podcast, there are lots of free resources, we'll link them below. But just get in a habit of showing up to do the thing that you want to do on at least, I would say a daily basis. We are I create daily. So mm -hmm. we recommend daily. Mm -hmm. If you just can't, if that's just out of out of the zone of possibility for you, then just create a habit where you show up on a regular basis. And yeah. whatever that is for you, whatever you can viably do right now, because that, and there's so many, that's the great part about the internet right now. There's so many free resources. YouTube is free for people to load to. You know, there's Anchor or SoundCloud where you can upload audio for free. Um, there's medium.com where you can set up a, very, very, very simple blog and just publish written word for free. Like there's all these, and then social media to spread the word for free. Mm -hmm. It's ridiculous how much you can start just 
for free on the internet. And yeah. sure, it doesn't have all the bells and whistles, but you don't need that if you're just trying to decide and build a habit. Yeah, which brings us back to the concept of social proof and also backlinks. Mm -hmm. um, so if you also have your own, if you do have your own website, um, and let's say that you're posting once a week um, or every few days, if you can increase that once, uh, like by one day a week, in order to post one of one article on Medium, a different article, not the same one. Do not duplicate content from your uh, blog or website to another site, um, and vice versa. But post on Medium. Then now, your whenever you create that, your profile, your writer profile, could include the web your website website link, which is one great way to get extra traffic to your website as well as build that social proof. Yeah. So so that's just an example. So so back to wrapping this up relative to reviews so we also are asking you now um, so we have products out there uh, icreatedaily.com you can go to our website and see our shop page see our journals uh, and in particular we have goals journals we have art journals uh, intuitive art journals as well as a gratitude journal and we have a podcast. So we would love it if you would send us your reviews. Here's an example. We're making you an offer. Uh, you get a free product. Um, um, and like if you have 90 Day Goals Journal and you post a review of our Goals Journal, uh, wherever you choose, you can send it to us. So you post it on your social media, you post it on Instagram, you post it on Amazon or easy to find wherever it is. Uh, send us an email creators at iCreateDaily.com. So that creators at iCreateDaily.com. Send us your address and a photo of the review, um, preferably a link to it. Yeah, we need to be a link to it so we can find it um, wherever that is. A link. So a link to the review, an image of the review. It can be a screenshot from your phone or whatever. And then a um, your address. And we will mail you a free journal. And with our appreciation and gratitude for you are taking the time to share uh, your review of our products in the world. And same thing with a podcast. If you leave a review on I Create Daily Podcast, uh, instead of a journal, instead of a purchase, then just send us your review, a copy of your review uh, and your mailing address um, and a link to it, then we will send you a free product as well. Awesome. All so, right, guys. And lots of gratitude to all of you for yes. tuning in, listening, sharing, and just being part of the I Create Daily community, Definitely. however you participate. Yeah. All right. Thanks. Bye. Bye. Thanks so much for joining us for the I Create Daily podcast. Please let us know what creatives you would like us to interview and what topics you would be interested in hearing more about. And if you enjoyed this show, please leave a review on iTunes. We value your feedback. We read all the reviews and it just helps us get the word out on the I Create Daily podcast. Thank you so much. Thanks so much.